Hey everyone, so welcome to my course on ordinary differential equation. Today we are going to talk about mass spring system. So I will be dividing this topic into two parts. So first part is today I am only going to talk about undamped mass spring system and in the next video I will talk about damping mass spring system. What is damping and undamping? I will come to it in a while. But before that, let's do the setup. So the name itself suggests we have to model this system, the system that involves mass and spring. And what we will see is when we try to model this system for both the cases, undamped as well as damp, what do we get is we get a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. And once we have the differential equation from our previous sessions, we know how to solve the differential equation. So let's do the setup. So what do you have is suppose you have a spring. Now what you do is you attach an object of mass m to this spring. So now what will be the scenario? So this is the scenario. So when I'm attaching an object of mass m to this spring, what will happen is this, this spring will try to go downwards. Why? Because of the mass of the object and the acceleration due to gravity. So because of these two things, this will start coming downwards. But at the same time, there is a restoring force from the spring as well. So when it is coming down, ultimately it will stop at some point. At this point, what is happening? Your restoring force is becoming equal to the force coming downwards. When these two things are equal, that means the spring will stretch till this point and then it will stop. So here there is no movement right now. So when we attach, it will start coming down. And after a moment, your gravitational force will be equal to the restoring force. And this position we call as an equilibrium position when both the forces are equal. So let me call this much displacement as S. Now, how do you represent this in the form of an equation? So for equilibrium position, I will need the gravitational force which is acting downwards, which is nothing but M into G, where G is acceleration due to gravity. And what is the restoring force? So if you recall Hooke's law, what does the Hooke's law says? Your force, the restoring force is proportional to the displacement right so where s is what this displacement so what i'm ha having over here is my force due to gravity is same as the restoring force if i remove this proportionality sign i have equal to ks so my gravitational force is becoming equal to the restoring force so saying that this spring and object with mass m is in equilibrium position it means i'm saying that your mg is equal to ks so this is what equation wise this is what the physical representation so now this is what i have now what do we do is we pull this object with some velocity downwards and then we release it so what will happen this will go up down up down up down right so we will have this moment of up and down or you can say we will have this motion we have this oscillations okay now there can be two things either this oscillations will keep on going that means we are in such a medium that there is no air resistance, there is no air friction or even there is no dashpot. Now what do you mean by dashpot? Dashpot means it's something that will ultimately reduces the oscillations to zero. That it will keep on going and then ultimately it will so slow down, slow down and ultimately it will stop. So that's what the job of a dashpot is. But now here I'm assuming that we don't have that air friction or anything. There is no dashpot. So when I do this oscillation, it will keep on happening okay so it will never stop that means such a system is called as an undamped system because there is no damping over here like dashpot air friction and all those things act as a damping thing okay they reduces the oscillation in this scenario i am assuming that there is no damping and therefore this is called as undamped mass spring system okay so now let's try to model this system so this was my spring initially then this was the second scenario the equilibrium position when i'm when i'm attaching an object of mass m it is coming down and then it is stopping at this position so here what equation do i have i have mg is equal to ks now what i'm doing is i'm pulling this object and then i'm releasing so that means it is coming down and then it will start oscillating okay now what is my x x is nothing but x of t what is it it is the displacement at a given time t so x is a function depending on t now this is my x right so it will keep on varying it will go up down up down up down when my x is positive we will fix the orientation when my x is positive means it is below the equilibrium position and if my x is negative that means it is above the equilibrium position so that's what positive and negative sign will mean okay so downward means positive is upward means x is negative okay now how will i model this system okay now what do i have is we will use newton's second law of motion it says that 
your all the force acting over here is nothing but mass into acceleration f is equal to m a right so let's see what are the force acting over here now since it's an undamped system there are only two forces acting on over here the one which is pulling down the gravitational force and the one which is pulling up that is the restoring force of the spring so what are the forces the one thing we have is mg which is pulling it down and uh, there is a first force second force by hooke's law or by hooke's law we have f is proportional to the displacement now what is the displacement s plus x so f is proportional to x plus s so if i want to remove this proportionality sign f is nothing but minus k times x plus s now why minus k because it is pulling it upwards so upward means negative sign downwards means positive sign so these are the two forces acting on the system so sum of the forces is equal to mass into acceleration by newton's second law so what do we have is m into x double dash since x is the displacement x double dash is my acceleration so m x dash is equal to the total forces acting on the system so gravitational force and the restoring force now what do i have over here is i have mg minus kx minus ks but what do we have if you recall we got one equation your mg was nothing but it was ks so because of this e equality this and this goes away so what do i have you have mx double dash plus kx equal to zero so this is how you can model a mass spring system which is an undamped system so this is what the equation i have where m is the mass of the object k is my spring constant okay is the constant of proportionality but since it is related to the spring we call it as a spring constant and now these are constants right so we know how to solve this differential equation so what do i have is i have x double dash plus k upon m into x equal to zero now if you try to find the auxiliary equation i have lambda square plus k upon m equal to zero we have seen second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients if you have not seen i have posted the link in the description you can have a look okay now here what do we do? what do i do is i have here lambda square plus k upon m equal to zero so my lambda will be what it will be square root but uh, let's remove the square root so to keep the thing simple so what do you do is you call omega square as k upon m so if i put that k upon m equal to omega square what so what do i have is lambda equal to plus minus i omega so this for just to remove the square root i am introducing this notation w or omega so since the roots are complex how your solution will look like your general solution will be a sin imaginary part into t plus b sin imaginary part into t your real part is zero so e raised to zero t so that won't come into picture so this is how my general solution will look like okay now what is the period of this motion now as you can see okay before going to the period as you can see if i try to sketch the graph of this thing see this will go towards infinity this will never stop this was oscillations will never stop why so because as t goes to infinity both my sine and cosine they are oscillatory functions they will keep on oscillating the oscillations will never stop and that's what the undamping system means when i pull and release since i don't have a damping over here in my medium this will keep on oscillating up down up down up down and that's what you can see from the solution as well it will keep on oscillating it will never stop okay so that is one thing okay now whenever you have cycles over here one can ask what is the period what is the frequency we know that the period for sin is what 2 pi and for the cosine is 2 pi and what is the period for sin omega t and cos omega t it is nothing but 2 pi by omega so what is the period for the oscillation period is nothing but 2 pi by omega which is nothing but 2 pi what was our omega it was root of k by m so it is nothing but root of m by k so once you have m and k you can easily find what is the period and once you have a period what is your frequency it is nothing but 1 upon t which is 1 upon 2 pi square root of k upon m so this is what the frequency is cycles per second or the hertz whatever the units you want to put so you can easily find the period and the frequency for the system okay so this is one way of writing the solution what is another way is uh, see whenever you have the waves over here one can ask what is the amplitude as well and since the wave involves sine and cosine obviously it will be a shifting right either you have a proper sine curve or your sine curve will be shifted on the right or your sine curve will be shifted on the left so what how much it is shifted so these two things one can ask what is the amplitude and how much it is shifted so what people do is they rewrite this in a much more simpler and the nicer way 
and what is that form this is that form x of t equal to c into cos of omega t minus delta now how to arrive at this form you simply substitute your a by c cos delta your b by c sin delta delta is some angle and when i plug in over here i can take out c outside what is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b it is nothing but cos of a minus b so this is what i have so now here c is called as an amplitude and delta is called as an phase shift angle okay so this is what my c and delta represents now from here what is my c c is nothing but if i square and add what do i get i get c square equal to a square plus b square so ultimately your c is nothing but square root of a square plus b square and if i take b upon a so what do i have i have tan delta equal to b upon a so what is my delta it is nothing but tan inverse of b by a and this delta is called as a phase shift angle so depending upon positive or negative it will shift on the left or the right side okay so that's what the shifting represents and that's why this is called as an phase shift angle and this c represents the amplitude now what is the amplitude now suppose this is the graph of the solution of that mass spring system undamped now here this will represent your amplitude okay so this is the amplitude and this is nothing but this is my one period and after that it is repeating okay so this is nothing but my t and this will keeping on going it will never stop so therefore this is an undamped system well such a system do not occur physically but then one can always model this kind of thing what comes is the damping thing and that we will see in the next lecture okay so this first conceptually wise now let's see some examples so that everything is fully clear now suppose this is the solution of some mass spring undamped system now one can ask you what is the amplitude from here so what is the amplitude if you remember what was our c it was nothing but square root of a square plus b square so in this scenario it will be nothing but root of 3 square plus 4 square and which is nothing but 5 so when you try to plot the graph for this solution curve you will get amplitude to be 5 units and if i ask you what is the shift phase shift angle so my delta is nothing but tan inverse of b by a which is nothing but tan inverse of 4 by 3 so this is my phase shift angle so from here you can easily tell and now this lies in the first quadrant okay your delta is positive because my a and b both are positive if suppose this is 3 and this is minus 4 then you have to take care of the angle right you have to make sure what will be the angle or if this is minus and this is minus then it will lie in the third quadrant so like this you have to take care where your delta will lie in which quadrant okay so you have to be careful with the angle so this is one kind of example if you have any problem with the angles you can ask me in the comment section i will answer those questions okay but make sure you do not make a mistake while finding the phase shift angle you have to take care of the signs as well okay now let's go for the second example okay now suppose you have an object whose weight is four pounds weight okay i am not saying mass and it stretches the spring by 12 inches now you have to find the equation of the motion when the spring is released from the equilibrium position that means what initial displacement is what zero because you are at the equilibrium position and from there itself you are releasing okay so your x of zero is zero and with an upward velocity of 10 feet per second square so what is the upward means x dash of zero initially what is the speed it is 10 feet okay and it is upward so what is your x dash of zero it is nothing but minus 10 okay so that's one thing you have to take care of minus sign you have to find the frequency and period of the motion and you also have to find the equation of motion okay so the first thing is what we know what is the equation it is nothing but m into x double dash plus k into x equal to zero so we need to find two things what is m what is mass and what is our k the spring constant okay so let's go let's find one by one so this is what the information we have w which is the weight which is nothing but four pounds your s which the one which we have after coming to the equilibrium position it stretches the spring by 12 inches and initial displacement is zero because we are pulling from the equilibrium position and initial velocity is how much minus 10 why minus because we are pulling upward okay now here it is pounds and here inches you have to make sure that all are in the same metric system okay now 12 inch means how much feet we are in pounds okay so we convert inch and pounds they are not in the same system so we will convert inch to feet so how much is 12 inch your 12 inch is nothing but one feet okay and now here w is given to be four pound so what do we have from equilibrium position we have m into g is nothing but which is nothing but my weight also what is my weight m into g is nothing but my k into s this is by our equilibrium position now what is my weight given to be four pounds into k and what is my s it is nothing but one so what is my k my k is coming out to be four 
so i got k equal to 4 and now from here i can find my mass also what is my w my weight is nothing but m into g now what is my weight weight is nothing but 4 m into what is g g is nothing but 32 okay we are in a british metric system so from here what is my m my m will come out to be 1 by 8 so i have my m i have my k and now we will find the solution so if i put the value of m and k over here what is the equation mx double dash plus kx equal to 0 so what i have I have x double dash plus 32 x equal to 0 and from here what is my omega this is my k upon m right and i call omega square as k upon m so what is my omega square it is 32 so what is the equation my x of t is a cos omega t omega square is what 32 so what is omega root 32 so this is nothing but root 32 t plus b sine root 32 t okay so this is what the equation of motion is now what is given to me x of 0 is 0 so if i put x of 0 equal to 0 so 0 equal to a cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is 0 so what do i get i get a equal to 0 and uh, what is my x dash of 0 it is minus 10 so you find the derivative of this and if i put x dash of 0 is minus 10 here i have what is the derivative minus root 32 sin of root 32 t so when i put t equal to 0 here it is a sign term so this term will go away plus root 32 b cos of root 32 t so what i have i have root 32 b and therefore my b is nothing but minus 10 by root of 32 so you put the value of a to be 0 and b to be minus 10 by root 32 so that is the equation of motion and one can graph the solution curve and what will be my t now my t is nothing but 2 pi by omega so 2 pi by root 32 so that's what actually we can further simplify this radical sign over here this is nothing but 16 2 za. so this is nothing but 4 root 2 so if you want you can further simplify this as 4 root 2 and this is minus 5 upon 2 root 2 so one can do that simplification so this is how one find the equation of motion and once you have omega you can tell me what is the period it is 2 pi by omega or 2 pi upon root of k by m and once you have a period you can tell me the frequency as well which is nothing but 1 upon period 1 upon t so that's how you solve this example now let me give you one homework problem and uh, you will tell me what is the solution now suppose you have, an ob you have an object whose weight whose weight is nothing but say six pounds and suppose it's it stretches the spring it stretches the spring by say six inches so what is my s my s is nothing but six inches convert this into feet okay and suppose i am releasing the object after pulling it down by say 10 cm so i will pull it by 10 cm and then i am setting it into the motion okay so what is my x of 0 my x of 0 is nothing but 10 because i am not releasing from the equilibrium position i am getting it down by 10 cm and then i am setting the system into the motion okay so my x of 0 is 10 and suppose my downward velocity downward velocity say 3 feet per second square since it's downward i'm giving it as a positive sign so this is the scenario you have now use the things what we have studied just now and you have to tell me the equation of motion period and the frequency so i hope this lecture is clear i will come up with the damping system in my next lecture meanwhile if you have any doubt in this thing you can ask me in the comment section and if the concept is clear do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you